in this hyper competitive in in changing data landscape how is wipro helping you know your customers use data to as you call it future proof their business wipro as an organization uh has has been in the in the industry for about seventy five years now, and 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 kind of matured from being a oil based company uh, to a, a leader in digital transformation and cloud transformation. It's been quite a journey. So what Wipro is offering uh, to our customer is a holistic amalgamation of solutions and services around cloud modernization, uh, cybersecurity, AI, and engineering, uh, along with a deep end data and analytics. So in my opinion, and what I see, I mean, I've spent 25 years in the data industry, right? I mean, I started my career building data warehouses for large consumer goods. In fact, they are the top consumer goods you know, company in the world today, All right? From building their data maps to integrating to make their enterprise data warehouses. I've uh, seen it all, and, and having led it in multiple regions, uh, having access to various type of industries. One thing is for sure, I mean, it's data, you know, from a data and analytics standpoint, it's always about the business success, right? I mean, going into cloud modernization and the services we you know, provide around digital transformation, uh, we have a very sometimes myopic way, uh, view in terms of getting data on the cloud and it's all, right? And it's not that get my data on the cloud and I'm done with it. That's just a starting point. That's the starting point. That's where your problems, as we call it, you know, start wherein a lot of organizations are blinded. For example, I can talk to you about uh, uh, multiple organization enterprises who are cloud ready, but then they are struggling with their data governance, struggling to have the data definition at the end to an extent where business does not trust the quality of the data. Without a meaningful and a quality data, any of your business use cases fail, right? I mean, even with AI or not with AI, your data is the fuel to everything that comes later. And if you do not have a quality and meaningful data, it fails. Where Wipro comes in, in, in terms of making organization uh, future ready, is we look at it from a holistic level, right? Not just getting to the cloud, but in terms of getting them uh, or de-risking their business and you know, making sure there's business continuity while you move to the cloud. Right? You see a lot of banking financial customers today averse to moving cloud. They're still stuck in the big data world but they are moving. I mean, they need GSIs like us who bring in that view, wherein we get in the right principles of governance, how to have and how to ensure right quality of data, and you know, ensure business continuity. Right. So we bring in aspects of AI, aspects of engineering into the mix, wherein you know, we are making sure whatever comes in as part of the end result goes back into addressing the quality of the data. It goes back into manufacturing so that there is a trusted wave of, of AI and data maturing the organization. Once you have the, those components or fundamentals ready, right, the governance, the quality, how AI works with the trusted quality data, you, have, you are basically future-proofing your organization. You could have federated data points coming in, you could have mergers and acquisitions coming in, but you have a principally sound uh, data institute you know, with the right fundamentals. That is where Wipro make sure we make our customers successful, making sure all these components are handled and we bring that view in inside out from the business aspects to fitting in the technology. It's so great to hear that holistic view in, in from your seat, you're able to very much see the macro perspective. What are you primarily focused on over the next six to 12 months. And are you noticing, I know you've talked about the trends that you're noticing across industries, but are there any other specific trends that you're noticing that come top to mind? Today, you look at the macroeconomic situation, what's happening with China and what's happening in the Ukraine side of it, how supply chains and logistics are impacted and overall the burden on the business that is there today, it's only increasing, right? I mean, that hit, we have to still recover from it. But at the same time, there is this undercurrent of a little, you know, from a financial side of it. But we see a significant amount of demand from the business side of it where, you know, in fact, when, when there's a lower dip in, in a you know, macroeconomic standpoint, that's where the data comes across as a savior. Right? We see a lot more analytical and AI use cases and demands in terms of business continuity, trying to address, take a very myopic and, and, and narrow view into business problems and attack it. And this is the time. Over the next six to 12 months, I see that as the biggest opportunity for us to address 
business critical needs be it on in terms of the regulatory aspects especially it's going to be pretty big on the regulatory aspect of it sustainability is big all ties back into again in terms of the quality of the data you have the kind of processes the data you know, governance that you have it makes it easier to get there so i think there's going to be a lot of push in terms of getting those uh, aspects out but i also see a lot of change in terms of or a push coming in with the emergence of uh, you know generative and regenerative ai that is making things faster in terms of what we are trying to achieve on from the analytical standpoint and business are trying to uh, embark on that much more faster than we have seen um, and i feel that this is going to get even bigger right in terms of this is going to tap into how ai or regenerative ai is going to work in terms of manufacturing uh, we predict by 2025 about 60% of new products uh, that are going to be coming out is this is going to be generated through regenerative or you know fed back in with the help of regenerative and generative ai 60% 60% wow so that is the influence of ai but at the end of the day again i always will bring back this point for that to be successful you need to have quality cloud data you know that is going to be supporting and that's why the whole point is that you know you should look at what we are doing with snowflake data cloud and snow pro from an ai standpoint is very very effective in terms of our vision uh, where we are looking at intersection of uh, you know regenerative and generative ai coming back in terms of cloud data coming in and making it a holistic feedback mechanism for organizations to feed into their manufacturing uh, for organizations to create customer centricity you know taking next best action right or even taking views into preventative maintenance or you know early warning system which is going to be absolutely critical in the near term and that's where i feel not just from you know for 12 to 6 6 to 12 months but i think the next 3 years are going to be completely defined by these aspects generative and regenerative uh, ai is going to eat traditional software up in terms of how we use data and analytics and ai I'm so glad you mentioned the data cloud. I want I want to dive into this a little bit more, you know, because partnerships are so tantamount to Wipro. How do you see this partnership with Snowflake filling that necessary void for clients and what specifically services uh you know are you delivering to your clients as they make their transition to the data cloud? Well, that's a fantastic question and this is something which is very close to me. uh because i was very in- instrumental in making sure we chose our partners right especially when it comes to data and analytics so one thing we've decided as we present an organization is we are going to invest deep in our partnership be strategic about what we who we go with right we're going to be as i call it inch wide and mile deep with our partnership not the technical or, or, or not the spray and pray uh, aspect of what we did in the past right i mean we have about 2400 you know companies that work with data analytics and ai right. so you can't access all of it so we have chosen you know partners like snowflake where we want to go really deep and we are doing that right because it fits with our vision i mean wipro has put in about a billion dollars into full strike cloud capability helping organizations with their cloud transformation digital transformation that it fits with the idea we have already invested in an end to end platform called wipro wdis wipro data intelligence suite Uh, which in fact ensures the journey for our customers right from taking them from on prem to cloud or you know maturing in the from a cloud transformation standpoint right as i talked to you about de-risking the business right. we have every aspect of right from you know initiation to defining their uh, business objectives their risk their governance quality master data management again these are the after thoughts it comes when you you know after the data has gone to the cloud we start getting those uh, instruments right in the beginning and take low hanging fruits and get in easy so that the business trust on data is maintained business continuity is maintained so we have created an entire end to end platform today that we are ipping and snowflake data cloud is a backbone to a lot of these things and you know for example we launched two data cloud solutions this year uh, one was on manufacturing uh, and the other one was on telco on the telco we launched it in the mobile congress in barcelona and this is uh, between those two we have about five business use cases that we are actually implemented in we have implemented with our customers uh, that we have taken and launched it with uh, snowflake and uh, uh, you know uh, and uh, pure ai backbone for example on the mobile side i mean we have two use cases one is 
using AI to predict in terms of where there are losses with regards to infrastructure, telco infrastructure, your you know transmission units with the drones taking pictures uh, and looking at aging transformers or or uh, antennas or whatnot, right? And predicting in terms of where the failure chances are. Because you take at any organization, the cost of after the fact maintenance is a lot more than proactively addressing. That's a part of any business. So that is the use case we are driving. The second use case we are driving is in predicting churn in the telco side of it. Similarly, on the manufacturing and supply chain, we uh, in Hanover Messi, we launched a solution. I mean, there were three use cases that we launched there and all driven by AI. Uh, one was around, you know, you know how the, especially you talked about global, global you know, macroeconomical side of it, right? Big it on supply chain. And that's where, you know, Snowflake and our things work together in terms of how do we do the data exchange, how logistics and, and supply chain and, and manufacturing to, to consumer or the retail side of it all talk to each other, how we need to get the data together. But AI is bridging the back in terms of uh, bridging the gap in terms of creating those integrated views, automating supply chain, creating those intrinsic views that would provide the best path and the, the cost effective part from, you know, from a business standpoint, right? So those are the things we are bringing a lot more. And also on the automation side, in the manufacturing side, in terms of understanding you know, you know, uh, the amount of effort that goes into monitoring a product, evaluating the human aspect of you know, evaluating the product, was always an AI taking a look at it. We were able to save about 60 to 80 percent of those. Uh, wow. And these are live use cases. I mean, I can give an example for a large cigarette manufacturing company. I mean, you have uh, actual people looking at each of the tobacco leaf and classifying them as to the quality of the leaf, and based on that, the cigarettes are created based on the type of leaf. Imagine, and that's what we're doing with AI. Uh, we have automating Automating it, that process. The process and AI with its vision, it's, is we are able to save about 10 to $15 million for that company. Real, real impact for your clients. Real impact for clients. Now. And that's what, and, and, and this is on Snowflake Backbone, right? right? This is what's on Snowflake Backbone. With your AI capabilities, we are driving that. So I'm, I'm quite excited, right? I mean, and we, for a long time, we had not gone into any solutions, but now we are the kind of integration with our vision that is happening. I know, as I said, about five to six use cases we have in the market, and we're going to roll on with the data cloud, uh, you know, global launch, and and get this out in our you near know, summit and everywhere else. So I'm quite excited about uh, you know what's going on there. An exciting next chapter for the Wipro and Snowflake partnership, and and it's great to hear that it's not just industry specific it's across multiple and and that's where it's it, you're talking about impact for your clients you see it across the globe absolutely and and it's easier right i mean you look at these use cases it's easily transferable to let's say a pharma company or, or in terms of drug manufacturing automation right. that comes in ai plays a big role in it right and and there's so much automation that we are doing not only that on the regulatory side too on sustainability side I mean, uh, we underestimate how you know, the importance of data on that. But as I said, data is the glue that that ties all of this together. And we want to make sure we perfect that thing. Narayan, we've covered a lot. We talked macroeconomic environment, impact Wipro is having for your clients across the globe. Now you're preparing the business for the next century, but along the way, also your employee workforce and your client ecosystem. It's important to know that, right? I mean, it's... Uh, there is a lot of investment that we are doing with our partners for the very same right. reason, right? And as I said, you know, example, what we're doing with Snowflake is pretty deep and we are invested. Same thing with our hyperscalers. We are pretty deep making sure we drive those successes. And with the same principles in mind, we want to make sure we are future ready. And I was kind of alluding to, you know, the waves of disruption that are coming in, right? For example, regenerative AI, generative AI. We want to be ahead of the curve, and we are ahead of the curve in terms of what we are trying to do with our solutions, with our go-to markets, I'd like to be ahead of the curve there. You know, Naran, great to hear how Wipro, over the past 75 years, is already thinking about the next century, not only for your customers, but your workforce. I mean, preparing uh, preparing for the future, it's great to hear. And from your role in the in the on the management side, um, I want to get even more personal with you, if if you don't mind. And we were talking off camera about the reflection uh, on your career. 
Are there any moments that stand out in being especially memorable and any advice, you know, that you gleaned from those experiences that you like to share with the audience? Because a lot of people are, might just be entering the workforce and any kind of tidbits and advice you could share would be greatly appreciated. There are many, uh, but almost always, I'll tell you, it's almost always when the businesses are successful. I mean, it takes me to the like, last 25 years in building data warehouses on-prem, on cloud, analytics, BI, to AI. You take any use cases, any intersection, it's almost always in terms of the business delight. It could be in terms of how you worked on your customer centricity and when worked on a customer delight through next best action, or it could be in terms of innovation or automation that's generated, you know, X a million dollars of cost savings to your business. But also it could be a simple dashboard that's that your uh, marketing looks at it. I mean, it would take about a week to integrate 10 different sources to get that report out. It could be about, you know, within 15 seconds to a minute, you have the same outcome. That delight is precious. And right. irrespective of how many years I've spent in this industry, that is what is always what makes happy to me. And pivoting to a second question in terms of what have I gleaned uh, through my career and my two cents if I have to take back an advice that I would like to give is, uh, probably I'll do it with an analogy, right? I mean, if you look at the disruption, the waves of disruption in this industry, um, if you look at when, you know, telephones were there, it took about 16, 17 years for them to get 100 million customers. And it came to mobile, uh, it was about seven years. And it, you, know, you look at, you know, when Netflix came, to when WhatsApp came, it was four and a half, three and a half years. You know, you look at when TikTok came, it's within nine months or you know about a year's time, and you look at how disruptive this the technologies can be, and how customers, which in turn have business, why for that position to be ahead of the game for those disruption, and last but not the least, take an example for ChatGPT, right? It was in January this year, that was just two, minutes, two months from their release, they had 100 million customers. And as of March this year, they had uh, 100 billion customers hit every single month. And if that's not disruption, what is? Where I'm, going to, where I'm coming is, is the disruptions will continue. And what's important uh, for our success is three things, right? I know it's about continuous innovation, more importantly, continuous learning, continuous investments into those those innovations, leading to differentiation for business success to helping our customers be ahead of the game with their competition, in turn helping us be ahead with our solutions. I think that's where the game is, and that's where I know you and I and our organization come together to hit the mark, stay ahead of the curve, and drive success for everybody. Always putting the customer first. Customer first, always. Well, Narayan, it's been an absolute pleasure sitting down with you on Data Cloud Now. Thank you for your insights and your perspective. I'm excited to continue this conversation down the Pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much for having me here.